Hi guys. Hope you're having a wonderful evening, day or night, wherever you are. Um, I've got a tough, well, some would say tough, I would say tough, tough task today. And um, before I get into that, I'm going to pray. Um, Father, you see the task that you have set before me. Lord, use my mouth. Help it be a vehicle of, of love and compassion and of truth, God. Help me to say um, what you've called me to say in this sermon in a loving way, God. I pray that you will just um, be in, that I will just be your oracle, God, and you will fulfill my mouth how you see fit. This is not for me, this is not for my glory, but it is all for you. For and glory, and I, I praise you and I worship you. In the name of Jesus, I give you all the praise and all the glory. Amen. Hi guys. Um, I have kind of a tough task today, I would think. Um, uh, this sermon is called Living Life Upside Down. Before I get into it, I'm going to play a recording that I did of me singing Living Life Upside Down by Jason Crabb. I can't play the recorded version because of YouTube rules. Um, so I I recorded it a cappella and I, I'm going to play my version of um, that recording for you. Uh, and then I'll come back with the sermon. Here's the song, Living Upside Down, Living Life Upside Down, my version of it. John has a new way of working at life. He's tired of the shop, his kids and his wife. He says the secret to his success was the meaning and finding himself. Now he found one to somebody else. You say we've risen to a new age of truth. And you're calling it a spiritual godly pursuit. But I say, yes I say, what if we fall into the bottom of the well, thinking we've, we've risen to the top of our mountain? What if we're knocking at the gates of hell, thinking we're heaven bound? What if we spend our lives thinking of ourselves? When we, when we should have been thinking of each other. What if we reach up and touch the ground to find we are living life upside down? We've got a program for saving the earth. One more children are denied the right to birth. One baby's blessed, another cursed. 
How we made this world first. Now that the life of a tree comes first, you say we rise into a new age of light. Age of light to tell me what used to be wrong is now right. But I say, I say, what if we fall into the fire and up a well? And can we raise them to the top of a mountain? What if we're knocking at the gates of hell? Thinking we're heaven bound. What if we spend our lives thinking of ourselves? When we should have been thinking of each other. What if we reach up and touch the ground? To find we are living life upside down, upside down, upside down. What if we fall into the bottom of a well, thinking we rise into the top of a mountain? What if we're knocking at the gates of hell? Thinking we're heaven bound. What if we spend our lives thinking of ourselves when we should have been thinking of each other? What if we reach up and touch the ground to find we're living life upside down? What if we reach up and touch the ground to find we're living life upside down. Um, that's the song Living Life Upside Down. Um, it deals with some really tough issues and let me say first, I'm not here to judge anybody. I'm not here to, um, demean anyone. I'm not here to z say anything, um, offensive to an anyone. I'm, I'm just concerned about the state of the world and how far we've gone. Um, I, I don't know if anyone else is concerned, but I'm, I'm totally concerned. And I think the issue is that we're so afraid now to come out and say what's true um, in God's economy because we're so afraid of being judged and we're so afraid of being uh, rejected by others that we we don't say what God says to be true. We all have sin and uh, no sin is greater than another sin. The Lord has said, the Lord said all have sinned and come short of the glory of God but I think the problem is we've categorized in like homosexuality, adultery, and any sexualized sin is up here and lying, cheating, stealing, those are just little sins and nothing is a little sin. Um, Paul does talk about sexual sin and how it is a sin, it, it's, it's it's bad because it's a sin against the body but if I think about it um, every sin is a sin against um, the body in a way because it's emotionally damaging to lie it's emotionally damaging to steal 
It's emotionally damaging to do all those things. It hurts the person when you gossip. It hurts the person when um, you just you just steal or cheat or lie. So it it all is a sin against the body, either physically or emotionally. I believe anyway, and I think if we were um, to come out and just say the truth, um, I as as God sees it. I think we free a lot of people. Um, I live in an area in my community with a lot of homosexual people. And I was coming in the elevator and I bumped into this, homo um, this homosexual guy from my building. And I, I, it was a Sunday and I said, I'm going to church and I told him and his friend that I was going to church and he said oh I couldn't go there I would burn up in the fires of hell and I said listen I said if you knew my struggles you would feel so much more comfortable I'm like we all have things that we're working on we all think we all have things that we're dealing with. We all have things that we're struggling with. We all have, my thing may not be homosexuality, but I'm telling you, it is something else. And he says, and he said to me, <laughs> and I said, well, I, and I'm a pastor's kid. He said, well, um, he laughed and said, really? I said, yep, yeah, really, and anyone who tells you that they're not struggling with something is lying. And I think the reason why things are so topsy-turvy is because we don't come out and say, yes, that's a sin. Uh, yes, that is wrong. There's no gray area about that particular one. But there is redemption in Jesus. And I think that we've beat up on people so much. People that have had abortions. People that um, are living in homosexuality. People that are, um, that don't identify as any sexual preference. They're like, whatever. I'm whatever, I like women, I like men, it doesn't matter. But I think when you say, like, I think that's, um, I think that's a form of just, um, brokenness. I don't think, I don't think the world knows, um, where to go or where to turn. I think they're just looking for hope and they're looking for Jesus and they're thinking that uh, Christians are close-minded and whatever but the thing with God is because I uh, created human beings and human human um, what am I trying to say here because he created human needs and us to need each other he knows all that stuff so he's not against you he wants you to be happy and can you be happy um living the way you want to live and rejecting his word i'd say yes but momentarily but true joy comes in jesus that's not being close-minded that's that's being God-minded, and God created all that stuff. All those needs that you want fulfilled, God created them. And he's waiting for you to see that he loves you so much that he wants to fulfill those needs through him. He doesn't want you to, um, he doesn't want you to, 
to suffer. He doesn't want you to uh, live um, outside of his will because he loves you so much. And when you tell people, when you tell people about the love of God, the love of God changes people. And before you address their sin, you need to start with love. You need to start with understanding. You need to start with hope. I think for too long, Christians have um, beat people up over the head for their sin and not said um, anything about Jesus loving them. And loving someone doesn't mean um, condoning them. It means embracing them in spite of us not agreeing or, you know, in spite of themselves. It means embracing them. So I think, I think we just need to start to embrace people. And once we do that, you'll be you'll be shocked at at how people turn around and i think we need to get back to um what god's original intention was for marriage for family for babies for all of that and i think when you when you get when you show people love they would they would want to know more about what you have to say and the ministry door will be open. But if you just go in with the, oh, you're going to hell because you're gay. Sorry, that's my notification. Oh, you're going to hell because you're gay. They're not going to want to listen to you or you're going to hell because you've had an abortion or, or because, you know, whatever. I think people really need to be loved and people really need to be embraced. And then when they see you genuinely love them and not just love them because you want to change them, they'll be open to what you have to say about whatever issue and God may use you to change their lives. And I think to correct um living life upside down like the song says we need to use love and we need to use the grace of god and we need to be more open to whoever god sends our way um lord jesus i praise you for what you've put in my heart today i pray that it will touch at least one soul, God. I pray that one soul will come to redemption and come to get to know you through this sermon, Lord Jesus. I pray, Lord God, that your spirit will, will dwell in me. Take, take out what you don't like in me. Take out any dross in me that you find displeasing, Lord. My only goal is to, is to, please you and do your will. Lord God, I praise you in the name of Jesus. If you happen to be watching this and you want to know more about, and you want to get to know Jesus, all you have to do is invite him into your heart. Um, he says, all you have to do is Believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that he is Lord and he will come into your heart. And some preachers like to say sinner's prayers. But um, to pray with people to accept Jesus. But, but I'm of the opinion that Jesus doesn't want to hear my words. He wants, he's, he's literally longing to hear your word. So just invite him into your heart. The, um, the way that you talk, the way that you speak, just invite him in. 
Um, be blessed. I'll see you later. Bye. Love you.